Greetings, everyone. Uh, I guess if you've stumbled across this, you have purchased an LBR20 Orby unit and you are wanting to try to do some voxel magic on it. Uh, I'm going to start off with saying that I am not a Linux person. I don't really understand networking and uh, truly I understand computers enough to just get myself in trouble. Uh, if you look at my channel, it is heavily car related, nothing to do with networking, but um, I am in a boat where I get really bad internet service and really good cell service. So this is an answer for me that I'm going to explore. Um, I've also had a couple friends of mine that are in the same boat as I am wanting me to try to do something because at least I was able to figure it out. Uh, before you plug everything in, I'm going to recommend that you uh, open up a couple web pages. Uh, the first thing we're going to go to is the Orby LBR2 uh, or LBR20 How To Mega Thread. There is a crap ton of wonderful information in here. Um, I would highly recommend you reading through this, whether you fully understand it or not. Uh, at least you will see some of the things that I am going through. My goal is to not make this video two hours long. I want to try to do this uh, quick and dirty or quick and fast as we can. Um, I will also link all of the pages I think that are relevant, uh, like this mega thread, uh, the voxel firmware, the Orby firmware that is recommended to downgrade to. Uh, there is also the LTE modem firmware. Uh, there is an update for it, the A05. Um, I'm sorry, to an AO6. So this is a downgrade. If you try the AO6 and things become unstable, I have been using the AO5 on T-Mobile and I haven't had any problems. So I'm going with the theory, uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So first couple things. Uh, so you are plugged into your Orbi via network cable. Uh, plug it into LAN 2. Uh, the first time I tried to do this, I plugged into the LAN 1, and it didn't seem to enjoy that. So we plugged it into 2, and everything worked. Um, in, the, uh, in the Voxel firmware, there is this quick start guide that talks about which firmware uh, we should start with. Uh, I would recommend doing this. Follow along and, and do as they are saying. So this is assuming you have just plopped it down plugged everything in and everything is up and running. So we're going to go into it as the default uh, IP address of 192.168.1.1. And you're greeted with this little setup screen. Uh, I go with the, if you don't have a compatible smartphone, which whatever. Uh, welcome to Orby, great. Of course I agree to all the Netgear things and it will check for the internet. Uh, it is not gonna be able to find one because your computer is disconnected and it is not connected to anything. So we will configure the internet ourselves. Uh, I don't have any satellites. I am using this solely as a way of getting internet in my house. The Orbi system kind of seems cool, but I've already got uh, a, a router and stuff that uh, that works well for me so um, so uh, right now you're gonna pick a password pick a password you can remember and type it more than once uh, you do have to answer the questions I don't know. It doesn't really matter and click next uh, your Wi-Fi doesn't matter. We can go back and change that later. And we should be in. So it'll tell you, hey, that's your stuff. Do you want to print it? You're more than welcome to print it. I don't print it, but print it. Um, if you had the internet, it would check for an update on the firmware. We don't care about that, so we're going to skip. And now we're going to type in uh, the admin password we just came up with. Cool. We're going to get about 1,400 pop-ups where they want you to sign up for all sorts of things. Uh, just exit out of all of them. 
let it finish telling you how awesome all of its apps are. Um, and then we're good. Okay, so you will see over here that this Orbi is currently running version 2.5.2.20. That is the firmware that you want to start on. If you go to the quick, cart, quick start guide, that is where it tells you you should start. I am currently on that firmware because I have, I have put the voxel on and then I have downgraded back to the original software or firmware so I could uh, do this tutorial. So I am not going to push the same firmware again to it, but I will show you where you would do that. You are going to download Let's see, so you, uh, you're gonna download this file. It's gonna come down as a zip file. In there is a uh, release notes and an image file. So click advance, administration, firmware update. And we're gonna go with manual update. And then we are going to browse to where you have that 2.5.20. And click it, click open, and it's gonna show right here. You would click upload. You would go through some prompts. It'll probably warn you that this is an older version of the software or firmware. Just keep on pushing that through. Uh, and eventually you will reach a point where it will start um, loading the firmware. Uh, do not unplug it, do not reset it, do not do the things uh, if you want this to work and not brick your device. That in mind, if you brick your device, I am not responsible for that. So please take this only as a, uh, a guide, not, uh, not the gospel. So you have pushed your software, your firmware, and you come back to this page and you have logged back in at 192.1681.1 and you are essentially at the screen and you have this firmware. Cool, we're both at the same points now. Now, it is time to push the voxel firmware. So we are going to go to the same spot, the firmware update, and we're gonna to go to manual update and click browse. And we are going to go to the latest and greatest voxel uh, firmware. And we're going to, and it is also an image file. So click that, click open. Click upload and wait. Uh, this says it takes about three minutes. I just let it go until it is done. Uh, typically there is a purple light on the top of your Orbi saying there is no internet connection. I kind of use that as my, my signal that it's done doing what it's doing. So. We will sit here and wait. Okay, and we are back. So we're back to our login page. Uh, we're still using the admin login and the password that we made originally. And look at that. We should be on version nine or something, something and it should say Voxel's firmware. Right? Cool. All right, next thing to do, go in and do something. Backup settings. We are going to do a factory default. So just go in, we're gonna erase everything um, just to make everything back to default. This will not mess up your Voxel firmware. This just takes your Voxel firmware and starts it over from fresh. Uh, so essentially, we're going to have to go through the same setup process that we did when we first turned it on. Um, this should only take a couple minutes. Okay, so it's done doing what it's doing. We're going to go through and we're going to do it just like we did before. Welcome to Orby. Uh, yes, Netgear, absolutely. We won't do anything to your Orbi that you didn't want us to do. Shoot, no internet? I'll do it myself. Don't worry about it. 
Uh, I don't have any satellites. And pick that password. Select them questions. Yep. Okay, we're going to skip our firmware because, well, we don't have internet and we don't want anything other than voxel. Okay, so same admin. Cool. Um, yep, yep, more pop-ups, more pop-ups, so many pop-ups. Okay, oh, my Atlanta, okay. Uh, a couple things we can take care of right off the front here. Um, e Teak man. So, uh, like I said, I am using this on T-Mobile Magenta Max. So, uh, if you are not using T-Mobile cell service, you will need to find some of this information out yourself. But um, if you are using T-Mobile, this is what I'm using. Uh, for our APN, if you are using something else like visible or whatever else you got, look up what your uh, your APN is for for those, um, and then come down here and pick your IP v4 v6. Cool. Hit apply. Awesome. Okay, those are all hanging out there. Now comes the fun part. So go into your start menu, or if you're on Mac, I don't know what it is. I think it's still called terminal, but essentially we're going to go into what I, the command prompt in Windows, and we're going to run it as administrator um, and dump it onto another screen. So uh, now we're going to do the, the cool things of SSHing. I don't even know what something shell, whatever, secured shell, I don't know. SSH root at 192.168.1.1 and it is going to ask for a password. Okay, so you are going to type in that same map from the future here. Yours is going to look a little different than this if you have never connected before. Uh, there is going to be something that essentially says uh, authorization key or something like that. You just want to agree to it. Uh, and eventually you will get to the same point that I will be at here in a sec. Same password that you did for your admin. It will not show up. Just type it. Okay, so we are officially in the box of the Orvi, and this is kind of where we do all of our fancy bits. Um, so, uh, I don't like I'm not going to sit here and give you a Linux uh, tutorial. Uh, you are more than welcome to just kind of copy my commands. If you're familiar at all with like old DOS or, you know, it's, it's a, very similar. So, you know, like CD dot dot change directory space dot dot will take you up one. Uh, and then LS is like typing DIR if you were old DOS gaze. So uh, we are looking at the uh, folder structure. Um, and now we're going to kind of take a look at some of the stuff in the mega thread uh, and start going through. Some of this, I feel it's kind of out of order, um, like changing your IMEI. I, I don't know why I feel like that should be towards the end. Again, it shouldn't really matter. Um, but, uh, so, uh, some of the, some of the things that I want to turn off and I think really help in its performance is kind of this bloatware stuff. So that armor, all the pop-ups we were getting at the very beginning, armor circle, ready cloud, uh, and the Amazon web service, um, we can shut all that off. Now, uh, he does put a note in here saying that if we turn off the AWS IOT, uh, the mobile device or the mobile app will no longer work with it. I don't really care. I don't use it. So 
uh, select all, copy, and then get your terminal, and it's the weirdest thing, just right click. Cool. So we have disabled the armor, the circle, the cloud, the AWS, and then this line lets us commit that to the NVRAM, and then we want to reboot, so hit enter. So we are just waiting for the, uh, the Orbi to kind of go through its reboot cycle. And like I said, I typically wait until the light on the top uh, turns to purple, saying that, hey, you don't have any internet. Typically that means that it is moved to a point where it is even looking for the internet. So that's typically when we can get into it. Uh, another way to kind of check, so if you can get into this, um, typically you have reached some level. Uh, I have found sometimes that, um, oh, so I just pressed up and it'll take the last command. Um, oh, good, circle. I don't know why the circle one still pops up, but whatever. Um, so sometimes I have found that you are not, wow, I really want to sell me that stuff, don't I? Um, you, oh, okay, it worked this time. So sometimes I have found that if you try to do this root thing again on this same screen, um, you will get a, something about unable to connect. Uh, I have typically fixed it by closing it and opening up another admin terminal or command prompt. Uh, that is most of the time fixed it. So we're going to type in the same password for our admin and we're welcome back. So uh, cd dot dot, that'll bring us back to here. Um, if you're wondering where we're coming from, it's this root folder here. So I believe what we SSH into thing. Anyway, so there's nothing in it. All right. So what's the next thing to do? Okay. So we're back to our mega thread. Uh, like I said, we're going to do the, the I M I E I M E I thing later. Um, this microcom thing, that's just another way of communicating and working in it. I have never messed with it. Uh, you know, do it at your own discretion. I feel, um, the SSH thing is just fine. Uh, okay. So we are now going to create a, a folder system that includes the scripts. Uh, that are and it's going to create a couple files. We're going to create firewall start.sh, that's your IPv4, and then your firewall 6 start.sh, and that is your IPv6 stuff. Uh, this, this means make directory. This touch, um, it's my understanding that touch just kind of creates the file with nothing inside of it. So you don't actually have to worry about putting something in. Uh, and this ch mod makes the file executable uh, so we can actually be ran. So you should be able to select all of this, copy. Uh, that is not the spot and come in here and then just right click and then hit enter. So those are all done. We can go find out to make sure that they actually got there. Uh, CD, where are we going? So M, so if you hit tab, it'll autofill if there's only one option. So we're going to circle, we're going to overlay, we're going to opt, we're going to scripts. Ooh. And then if we do LS, see, there's our firewall start SH and our firewall six start SH. Cool. All right, now we're gonna populate that with some information. So right below that is your firewall start SH. Uh, that's your IPv4 uh, TTL mod. Your TTL mod is what, I don't honestly know. It's a number that is sent out, it's, it's time to life. Um, and so depending on the number that is sent out is how your cell um, service views the data coming out of your phone. So 65 means it's coming out of the cell phone. Uh, if it was 
anything higher than that, then uh, basically it would mean it was the uh, it was the hotspot. So then you would be billed under a hotspot. But if you set both of these to 65, uh, it'll just view that you are using your phone as you normally do. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is go into this firewall start.sh. Um, and to do that, I use Nano, not Anna. Nano. Uh, Nano is just a text editor. There are a couple different uh, Linux based ones. If you're comfortable with something else, feel free to use it. I've just used Nano in the past. Uh, and then we're going to do firewall. And then I did the tab, but there's two different versions. So I'll do a dash and then a tab. And then we'll go into it. So there's absolutely nothing in here currently, but we are going to select all, copy, go back, right paste, right paste, right click. And then control X and it says you want to save it yep and that's what we want to save it as there you go and so if you wanted to see that again to see if it made sure it worked you can just press up a couple times nano firewall start sh and there it is so control X will take you out cool now we're gonna go ahead and do uh, the IPv6 one so nano Firewall six, nothing in there. We're gonna select all, copy there, right click, control X, yes, and enter. Cool, so we have set our TTL, so your cell provider will not know where all the things are going. Okay, so at this point, if you were not concerned about doing the IMEI magic, uh, conceivably you could do like a reboot and put your SIM card in and you should be good to go. I'm going to go a little bit farther because there's a couple other things that I want to do. Um, uh, he, he covers band locking. So if you're really concerned about uh, sticking to a certain band or let's say you have a band that's just drastically stronger and you know, and like for some reason it keeps switching to something that's just tanking, you can explore this. I have not explored this. Uh, if you have any grand questions, please contact Hazard Jass. Hazard or Jass. Hazard. This guy here, he is super nice. He is super knowledgeable. He has always replied to my posts in this thread within a day or so. Um, the other thing which he actually kind of recommends more over band locking is tower locking or what they call cell locking. Uh, this is, this is, I feel a little bit more realistic. Uh, if you have cell towers in, in a close proximity, I've got a cell tower that's like a quarter of a mile away and then the next one's like a mile away. So mine is always going to be hooking up to the closest one. Um, but this is the code that you would put in, uh, similar to how we would, uh, similar actually to how we're gonna, we're gonna do a Wi-Fi kill um, here in a sec. Um, we would create a file and then we would end up calling this in what we're calling the RC local file. And so whatever goes in this RC local file is what's called up at boot up. So, um, but, read through this section here if this is something that in interests you feel free to like try it you know like worst you're gonna do is brick it it's not mine so <laughs> no i'm joking um okay so uh, like i said the, the other things that i'm gonna do i'm going to do what i'm calling wi-fi kill uh like i said at the very beginning i am only concerned about this thing bringing uh the internet into my house. I do not care about the Wi-Fi signal. And even though there are some options to turn off Wi-Fi inside, there is still the whole like satellite Orbi system uh, Wi-Fi that's going all the time. So I believe this kills everything. If it doesn't, well then I'm just this is a waste of time. For the most part, it turns off all the other stuff though. And that's, that's half the battle. So uh, we're gonna add a new file within the script folder. We're going to just do nano, uh, and we'll call it Wi-Fi underscore kill. And there's nothing in here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to do sleep, 120 seconds. 
Essentially what this is going to say is uh, we're going to let it go through its full boot up and then when it enters into this um, into this script, we're just going to pause for two minutes to make sure that the whole software has finished doing what it's doing and then we're going to go Wi-Fi down. That's it. Uh, Control X. Yes, we're going to save. Yes, we're going to do that. The other thing we have to do is the ch mod. So ch mod plus x, uh, Wi-Fi kill, and now that should be an executable. Cool. Okay. The next thing that we got to do, uh, we're going to go back to our mega thread and somewhere we're going to take this script here for making a directory and creating a, this RC local file. So we're going to copy this, go back to our here and left click, right click and hit enter. Okay. So, um, let's go find that. So we were in overlay, etc. So ls cd except whoops that not a word etc and there it is rc local okay so uh we do not need to make this executable with the um whatever that thing's called the ch mod uh, but we are going to go into it and add a little uh, add a short script so we're going to go nano uh, rc local we're going to go in and what we're actually going to do is we're going to copy this we're not going to use this verbatim, but we are going to copy it in there and then we're going to change the cell lock mod script to our Y Fi kill. And that's it. So control X. Yes. And yes. Okay. Okay. The last thing that we need to do is what everybody refers to as the magic, right? So uh, if you're not familiar with magic in these router things, essentially what you're doing is you are making the internal modem mimic an IMEI number, which is being identified to your cell server as something else. So what I use is I have an old uh, Pixel 3a. So my Orbi has an identity crisis and believes that it is a Pixel 3a. And if I go online to my T-Mobile account and look up um, what device is on there, it says Pixel 3a. So it works. Um, okay, so we are going to go up to here. And actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it from a text file. Uh, just not that one. Oh, yeah, that one. Um, so I, I can, I can put all this in the link, uh, and I can go over this more once we, once we get up and running. So, um, so right here, we've got our IMEI repair. So, uh, you're, you get this new IMEI number. This is where you would put your really, really long number that belongs to a device that you own. Please don't go online and find these numbers or find something to be generated, like buy something or like God knows I have a closet full of old cell phones. So, um, yeah, so I am going to do, I'm going to do this off screen. So hopefully I'm smart enough to not completely screw myself and give out my IMEI number. Um, so we will be back. Okay, so we've got my IME nine number, the IMEI number from a phone that you own, and we're gonna hit enter. So I took this code uh, straight from here, right? Uh, select, copy, right click in the terminal, and then change all the 010101s to the IMEI number that you got. You're gonna hit enter. Apparently, I don't know what happened. There we go. And you should get a confirmation that your IMEI number has changed. Uh, there is another way. I like, to, there's a couple different ways. I like to kind of just double check because my OCD is strong. Uh, 
we can use this get IMEI number. Um, we can we can just view it. So we enter that. Boom. Same thing. The other way we can view it uh, is within the GUI here. So if we scroll to the bottom, you will also see this number here. Uh, that is the number that we did and uh, some of this will be blocked out because I hopefully am smart enough to do that cool so at this point you are good to go we have we've turned off all the bloatware we have let's go through our checklist we have turned off all our bloatware we have set up our TTLs we have um, we have added our, our TTL uh, scripts. I personally added the kill Wi-Fi um, or the yeah and and then the band locking and stuff um, that's going to be kind of more on you. If this becomes relevant to me then I will go back and figure out what I can do. Other than that uh, I wish you the best. So we are essentially to the point that I like to do. So we are going to do a reboot and we're going to let it do a full reboot. And then again, like this is probably overkill, but I like doing a good solid reboot after we did all of that stuff and then it can process. And then once it comes up and it does not work, um, or it won't clearly connect anything, then we will unplug it, put our SIM card in, and we should be good to go. So we will just wait for the reboot. Yeah, I don't want your armor. Okay, so we are up and going, but we do not have our SIM in. Uh, I like to come in here and just double check a couple things. We want to make sure that our IMEI number is stuck after a reboot. There's no reason it shouldn't have. Um, yeah, so we are good to go. So now we're going to close out of this screen. We're going to unplug it. The Orbi does not support hot swapping of SIMs according to Orbi's own user manual. Micro sims are obnoxious as hell. All right, so we are in, we are plugged back in, and now we wait. Like this, this part typically takes about five minutes. Um, the one thing I do not like about the Orbi is the fact that when everything is working great, there are no lights. So and the lights on these things are pathetic so you have to literally be staring down its neck um, so eventually you will reach some point to where there are no blinking white lights no purple light and that should mean we are online so let's go back in 192.168.1.1 we're going to lock in, log in, log in. It is late. I'm ready for bed. Uh, use your password that we have used so many times before. We'll probably still get some pop-ups. Yeah. I don't know why the armor one. I'm going to ask that question. So this, uh, the LT firmware is available. That's what I was talking about. Um, I let's go take a look. So let's go into advance. Uh, we'll go in an administration. We'll go firmware update. Uh, we are not updating anything right now. I'm just showing you what I am talking about when it comes to the LTE. So there is the LTE modem inside. Um, and so that also has a firmware. So currently I am on a 5 there is an A06. I have not updated um, 
to the latest and greatest, and I haven't had any problems with my T-Mobile. Uh, if you start having, I don't know, instabilities and whatnot, try the try to update some people have updated and had problems so they had to downgrade uh, again like I, I will leave you a link of where you can find that downgrade um, so yeah so let's go to our router status uh, so we are we are online I will do my best to cover all of this if I do something stupid and don't cop or and don't block something out please don't be mean and, and do something rude um, scroll down to the bottom uh, mobile broadband we still have our IMEI number this is the cell number associated with the line I will also do my best to block all that out the other part that I'd like to take a look at is the uh, connection status this is kind of a, a nice overview it gives you signal strength uh, lots of information that I will probably try to block out future me block this stuff out uh, but it gives you your RSRP value and your RSQ value. These you in, you can use these values to kind of fine tune your connection, moving it around your house, shoving it up in the attic. Um, I actually have mine out in a pump house, which is outside, but it's it's heated and dry and out of the rain. But it's the farthest away from anything electrical. Um, some tower information, stuff like that. So anyway, so everything's up and running good. The other thing that I like to double check, we're gonna go back in to um, our SSH. I like to double check that the TTI has actually changed. And so there's two, actu there's two commands here that will give us um, it, it will check the TT, I'm sorry, TTL and the HL uh, values. So all we're going to do is copy these and paste it in there. And this is what we want to see. We want to see TTL set to 65. That was the thing that we did. And we'll check our IP6 table. Well, I don't know why it copies that. I really am not smart enough some days. Blam, an HL set to 65. So that means that everything going in and out of my modem looks like I am sitting on my phone, going to the bathroom, playing some Candy Crush. So there you go. So exit out of there. And from there, you have access to the internet. Uh, we can do a quick speed test. I will say that uh, where I am at probably is not the best uh, location for this. It's out in my office, out in the garage, behind multiple walls. So uh, in, in other testing and better location and kind of aiming everything towards the tower, typically I'll get between 78, 70 to 80 down, you know, 15 to 20 up with me coming from six down and 0.7 up, uh, that is leaps and bounds better. So there you go. If you have any questions, please uh, put them over in the, uh, the, the wireless joint thread. There's so much great information. Be careful going, if you decide to read through whole, this whole thing, please note that everything has been condensed to this first post. Because uh, you will find a lot of conflicting information, uh, maybe not conflicting, but kind of unnecessary information. And yeah, so I hope you like this. I hope this works for you. You can keep, leave a comment, like, subscribe, you know, all those typical YouTube things. So I hope this helped get you to where you needed to be. And thanks for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.